Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Lisboa, which is the latest super heavy, super crunchy, super elegant Euro style economic simulation from designer Vita Lasarda, who previously has put out Vinos and CO2 and Kanban and The Gallerist. And his latest baby, and I think this is probably the game he's most passionate about, is on Kickstarter right now. So I'm going to be doing a two player run through of it so you can get an idea of what the game is about. And it's insanely deep web of interconnectivity. I'll do my best to demonstrate that for you today so you can decide whether it's worked back. And although, before I get going, I should mention this is a prototype, although I think it's probably a pretty good idea of what the real game will look like. It's got all this kind of Portuguese tile work look to the board. And uh, But still, you can go check out the Kickstarter page. There's an eye. Get the eye up there in the top right corner to check it out to see the final. I think this is a pretty good idea of what the game will look like. Anyway, and here it is, the board set up, and it is ginormous. I gotta pull all the way back here to show you everything. This is a, this is a table hog. There's a ton of stuff going on. But what's the situation? Well, history lesson time. In 1755, uh, Lisboa was struck by an insane earthquake, like nine on the Richter scale. And it was immediately hit also by a tsunami. And then after that, it had three days of fire. And so it was pretty much all but destroyed. There's a little bit you can see on the box cover, uh, just a hint at the rampant destruction. So this was a crushing blow for Portugal. And so the king and the prime minister got together and hatched a plan to try to rebuild and revitalize the city ASAP and also modernize and all that at the same time. And this this game takes place over the 22 years of the rebuilding of Lisboa, and we players are nobles who are in the area trying to contribute to the revitalization of the city, while at the same time earning a little bit of prestige for ourselves along the way. And I'm going to be showing you how that works. This is a big game, there's a ton of stuff going on. but um, although. The crux of the game is very simple. Here's how a turn works. The first thing that happens on your turn is if you have any ships that are out to sea, if I have any ships that are out to sea, they return so they can be loaded up with more stuff to ship off to make money. Then I play one card from my hand. And these are multi-use cards, so there's a few different things you can do with them. But anyway, I play one card, and that can trigger a huge, complex web of interconnected actions. But I'll talk about that as I go. But anyway, I play one card, do whatever it's going to be, depending on how I use it as a multi-use card, either to do business in my own area, or to visit the royal court to go talk to the prime minister, the king, or the master builder. The three main movers and shakers that were responsible for the rebuilding of Lisboa. I can go to the court and talk directly to them and get access to their benefits, or I can use this card to increase my own business uh, opportunities. And then the card is gone. At the end of my turn, I draw back up a new card, and then it's the next player's turn. So that's it. On your turn, you play a card, you do what it says. Sounds simple, right? It's not. It's going to be a tricky one. So, let's talk a little bit about the setup first. Um, over here is the city, the, the downtown which we're going to be rebuilding. Each one of these spaces is a place where we can build one of our shops. Once I have built a shop, it can start generating goods, uh, which I store in my warehouse. The goods that are in my warehouse, I can either use a ship to send them overseas to make money, because money can get tight in this game, or I can use those goods to bribe the officials. Because remember when I said, when I play a card, I can either use it for business or I can visit the palace and go talk to them directly. If I use it for business, one of the business actions I have is to take my goods and kind of back channel bribe these guys. So every card I'm either going to use pretty much to bribe these guys by giving them goods or to visit them directly and spend privilege. I have to spend privilege to go talk to the master builder and then get access to his actions that way. These, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actions are the crux of the game. They are all about building shops, building public buildings that um, can enhance the value of shops, getting law decrees in your favor. These laws that are out here, if I snag these, these become bonus point objective cards at the end of the game. So there's these actions. There's also getting royal favors, getting in good with the clergy, building ships. We need to build ships to ship stuff off to be able to make money. Um, producing goods in our shops. If we have already built shops, we need more goods to be, etc, etc. Or getting state officials installed in court. We need those state officials to be able to build the public buildings. Or get blueprints. We need the blueprints to be able to build the state buildings, which can be papaled by our state representatives um, so that they can add more prestige to our actual shops, which is where we generate our goods to make money, it's a blah, you know, etc, etc. Yikes! 
Like I said, this game is very deep. There's a huge interconnected web of stuff. So, um, as part of setup, all these rubble cubes are put out here, and this represents the destruction that Lisbon went through. Every blue cube represents flood damage, red cubes represent fire, and gray, brown cubes represent uh, what's it called? Earthquake damage. And to be able to build in these spots, we have to spend money depending on how much rubble there is. If I want to build in this spot right here, I look at the rubble in the um, column and the row, so it's like all of this rubble, this is the rubble that I have to pay to get past. And a red, it costs two for every red and three for, which is fire damage, and three for every, um, what do you call it? Uh, earthquake damage. So to build here would cost me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 to build. Although the other important thing is, let's put all these back. These were all put out randomly, of course. I think I might have just randomized it a little bit more. But anyway, um, so these were all put out here as part of setup, and they define how expensive it is to build these shops. But every time you build a shop or a public building, where you can see there's rubble in each of these spaces for the public buildings, every time you build, you get to claim some of that rubble and clear it up completely. Um, most of the rubble you just have to pay to build around, but some of the rubble you get to claim, and there's a set collection element. Every time I successfully collect one, um, earth, one brown, one red, and one blue rubble, that's a full set. That increases my bottom line. The crown is so pleased with me actually clearing all the rubble out that my business increases and my warehouse increases so I can store more stuff and I can do more actions, or I can store more action cards. So I want to clear this rubble out because also as I clear the rubble out, it becomes cheaper to build shops. And again, I want to build the shops to make goods, to either bribe the officials or to sell overseas so I can make money, so that et cetera, et cetera. Right. So anyway, a lot of destruction was done. We're going to be rebuilding. And by the way, in a two-player game, row E is cut off. All these have already been built by somebody else. So it tightens the board up a little bit. In a two-player game, we only have access to rows A, B, C, and D. No E's need apply. Um, let's see. What else came out randomly? Oh, also randomly as part of setup, each player draws two and keeps one clergy tile. This is a uh, church tile that gives me a benefit as long as I keep this tile. My benefit I got from this, and I tossed another one. This is the one I chose to keep. This allows me, this makes it easier for me to increase my influence. And also, since I'm the first player at the beginning of the game, I've got four influence. Jen is the second player, has five. You use your influence when you go to court. Remember, I can play my card to do business, or I can play my card to go to court. When I go to court, I have to pay influence to go visit the royal folks and get access to the actions they give. So, um, th and this is nice for me because it's easier because I have a plus two bonus on earning influence. Jen's special power, she chose this one that gives her more victory points. This, this wig here is the symbol for victory points in the game. Normally, once a player has a full set of blue, red, and brown cubes, you know, which means they've cleared up all three types of damage, that increases their warehouse size, it increases their overall business um, the, the size of their business so they can do more action cards. And there's a little reminder over here that every full set is worth three points in the game. Uh, you, you score that three points in the mid game and then also at the end. So if you get three set, uh, a set of three early, that's six points. But in Jen's case, she gets plus one for every set. So Jen, because she has this, she wants to start chasing after clearing out rubble as fast as possible because rubble is implicitly worth more points to her. Me, I want to start doing influence action so I can earn more influence. Also at the beginning of the game, we get one of each of the four goods, gold, Old books, uh, silks, or you know, uh, fabric, fineries, and tools stored in our warehouse. And our warehouse, at the beginning of the game, we can only have two of each, and we can only have two cards in play. But remember, once I complete a set of rubble by you know, clearing out, by building, I get to increase my warehouse size and my business size by one. And also, I take this little mark over here, and this gives me a favor with the prime minister later on. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff, so much interconnectivity here, folks. Anyway. I think I'm done talking about it. Thank you for your patience. Now, we're going to start doing it. I'm the first player, which is why I have less influence than Jen. First thing I do, like I said, is if I have any ships, they come home. But nobody's built a ship yet, so I'm going to skip that. And now, I'm going to, do, I'm going to play one of these five cards. And these were starting cards. These are the cards from the 1755 to 1757, the first two years of this simulation. 
Um, after I'm done, I'm in my turn, I'm going to draw one of these cards, which represents 58 to 62. After we get to the halfway point, once the second half of the game is triggered, all these red and blue cards will potentially go away, and they get replaced by purple and brown cards, which go all the way out to 1777. And these are more powerful versions of the cards we start with. So they get, you get more and more powerful as the game goes on. But anyway, right now, i got these five cards to choose from, and I have to play one of them. And remember, I either play it... Oops, sorry. The economy of uh, Lisbon or Lisboa is right here. I, it should be. It starts out here at zero three, which will come into play later. All right. So I'm going to play one of these. I'm either going to play it to do business or to visit the royal court. Or I should say, there's a third thing I can do. Although you never want to do it. There's a reminder of what you can do with your cards right here. You can play it to visit the royal court, or you can play it to do business. Or you can just discard it. You, I could throw one of these cards away to get another gold. And that would be my whole turn. That's a terrible turn. You only do that if you're really desperate. Gold is nice because it's a wild card. It can stand in for the other goods. And it's also the most valuable good in the world at six bucks. But still, that is not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to discard one of these cards to get a gold. And that's my turn. I'm instead going to play these cards to do business or visit the royal court. So what do I want to do? Well, remember... I have a thing where I am good at earning influence. So I want to trigger as fast as possible the earn influence action. Because um, right now, Jen, in the, if she tries to trigger earn influence, she gets nothing. She, um, but me, I've got a little plus two. So there's two ways you can trigger the earn influence action. You can build a boat, which then has, you can see there's a little symbol right here of earning influence. Or you can keep visiting the archbishop. Every time you visit the archbishop, he moves clockwise around this, which gives us access to different benefits. Once he's gone all the way around a full 360, you will notice you get the opportunity right there to increase your influence. So those are the two ways you can increase it. Those are the two ways that I can take advantage of my clergy bonus. So I want to make one of those happen. So I think I'm going to start out by building a boat, yeah. All righty, that just makes uh, perfect sense for me. I want to get a boat built. How do I do that? Well, the main, cr the nine actions in this game are all right here. Uh, build a boat, produce stuff, build a building, build a state, or you know, get a, a decree, build a state building, etc., etc. All the actions are right here. So I want to build a boat because that will let me trigger. Now, there are two ways we can get access to these actions. It depends on how we want to pay for them. If I want to, I can visit, I guess, see, this is the Royal Builder. If I play this card to visit the Royal Court, I will have to spend some of my influence to have an audience with, the with, well, with in this case, the Master Builder. By spending my influence to visit the Royal Court, I will get access to two of the, or to his primary action and one of his other actions. I can do this plus one of these. Now that's no good. I want to, if I want to go to court, I want to visit the prime minister because I want to build a boat because I want to take advantage of my special power. But interestingly, my starting hand of five cards, I don't have a prime minister card, so I cannot. I have no contacts. I have no way to go visit the, the uh, prime minister. So I'm going to play a card. It's not to visit the royal court because that's not going to give me access to this action. Instead, I'm going to play a card to expand my business, which means instead of playing it up here, I play it into my portfolio, and they slide in like this, and they give me access to special powers for the rest of the game. And after I expand my business by using one of these cards, I then have a choice. I can either sell my goods overseas, but only if there's a ship, uh, so I can sell my goods to make money, or I can basically not visit the guys. Remember, I was talking about if, if I go to the royal court, I can visit this guy and get access to his actions by spending influence. But instead, if I just do business, I can take my goods and effectively bribe these guys by giving them the goods that they want to be able to do those actions. Although, interestingly, by bribing them, I only get access to the small actions. I don't get access to the big action. If I want access to this big action, I got to go to court and visit them and spend the um, prestige. But if I want access to the small, well, hey, I can just do business, throw them a little something off to the side, a little bit of a bribe, and get access to those actions. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand my business, which means I'm going to play one of these five cards for that purpose. Now, with these cards, the center icon tells you what the card does if you go to royal court. The icons on the top and the bottom, they tell you what to do with the card if you expand your business. So 
I'm, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna I say I could use any of these five cards to expand my business, but actually right now, this is the perfect one. So I take this and you notice it has an arrow on the bottom. That means it slides in from the top down. If I did this one instead, you'll see the arrow is on the top, which means I slide it in from the bottom up. And it gives me access to this special power, but instead I'm doing one of these and I slide in from the top down. So, of all these ones I'm choosing, I'm sliding this one. As I slide it in, I cover up this icon and do whatever it says. In this case, I'm sliding this. This icon gives me access to another books resource. And remember, at the beginning of the game, the maximum storage I have for each of these goods is two. So I have filled up my warehouse with books, or learning, or knowledge, whatever you want to call it. And now this is covered up. I continue sliding it in. And now I have upgraded my business and before, uh, um, whenever I do an influence action, I get plus two. Now I get plus three. One, two, three. So my business has become even better at generating influence because I have upgraded my business by doing business. Now, if I had slipped this one in instead, I would have um, immediately, immediately scored three influence. I would have moved up. And I would have upgraded my business not very much at all because that's a zero. That is, a t that is not a particularly exciting business upgrade card. It doesn't really do anything for me other than take up space. Because remember, I can only have two business upgrades at any time. So I didn't want to play that. I played this because I am planning on doing an influence action. And this gives me plus one. And you'll notice it was the only one. I had these guys that gave me zero on my influence. So I chose this one. It gave me a book and it's increased my influence earning potential. So I play the card, I did the bottom action, and now I've given myself this special power. And after I do that, I then have a choice. I can sell some of my goods overseas for money. And the value is over here. Gold is worth six. Books and um, fine luxury silks and whatnot are worth five. And tools are worth four. So now is the best time to sell because these things over time, they will become less valuable the more we produce. They will never go up in price. So if you want to sell stuff, you want to do it sooner than later because over time they will be worth less and they'll never be worth more. Although there are special powers you can get that increase their value. Anyway, so I either sell my goods, but I'm not going to do that because there's no boats. I can't sell a good without a boat. So instead, I am going to do this action, which is bribe officials. Which means, remember, I can give up some of my goods. I can give up one or two goods to bribe um, one or two of the, the nobles and get access to their little actions. So I want a boat, right? That means I need to bribe the prime minister. And right here, here's the symbol for, inter or for bribing them. You know, or shaking hands with them and do, engaging in trade is what the rules call it. Jen and I, we call it bribing. So to engage in trade with this guy, I either have to give him books or gold because gold is a wild card that stands in for anything. So, hey, I just earned some books off of this doing business. I am going to give these books to the prime minister, to the marquee. And he says, oh, well, that's very nice. In exchange, I will let you build a boat. Thanks, boss. So I'm going to build a boat because remember, I wanted to build a boat because that triggers my bonus. So this is the first boat to be built. I'm going to build this. And there's a reminder here, a cost to build a boat. To build a boat that only has a storage capacity of one, which this first one does, the second one has a storage capacity of two. To build a boat with a storage capacity of one, I have to give up one good of my choice. I think I'll give up these tools because they are the least valuable good I've got. So I'm giving that up to build this boat. And this is my second card I'm going to slide into my portfolio. And remember, at the beginning, my business is small. I can only have two cards in my portfolio. I have to clear out a lot of rubble to make my business bigger before I can get a third card in play. But anyway, so I paid one. If I was, if it was a big boat that could store four things, I would have to give up four different goods to build it. But over here is a reminder that these boats are worth points as well. So the bigger the boat, the more points you get by giving up those goods. But anyway, so I built this boat and now I, I paid my one good. I'm going to slide it in and um, let's see here. There's two things that happen. First of all, the economy, this is the symbol for the economy right over here. See, look, it's the economy of Portugal, everybody. The economy goes up by one. The economy gets better because, hey, our, our naval fleet is increasing. Hooray. And I get to do a, this is an icon for do an influence action. So I slide this in. I am going to do an influence action. And that means, hey, I get influence now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Or actually, hold on a second. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Do I, do I, do I, 
do I get the influence from this or do I do this and then I get that influence for a future action? I'm going to double check that. Let me double check on the rules. Let's see here. That's not church scoring. That is boat scoring, building a boat. Uh, right. So I'm just checking the rules right here really quick. Um, I, there's so, this is such a big complex game, folks. I'm trying to try remember every little thing here. It's just a slot on top of a play board. However, the purpose is already, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, finally, um, but, 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 and bonus two cards, you receive four influence so from the two cards on top of a player board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I do. So I just earned six influence. One, two, three, four, five, six. And because I just hit that, I also scored a victory point. Yay! I am on the board. Now, anytime I want, I can use this influence to visit the royal court to get access to the other actions. Or if I'm just short of money, I can sacrifice influence to get cash on hand. Kind of similar to the, uh, the there's a similar trick to this in Gallerist, actually. But anyway, so I built a boat after bribing the, the prime minister and activating these two actions. And, but I'm not done yet. Remember, when I do business, if I'm going to bribe, I can bribe two more. I've got three more goods. If I want, you know what, what the heck, let's, let's make the most of it. I'm going to give up these fine um, fabrics to bribe the king because that's what he wants. He wants fabric or gold. So I can do this either to get a, um, a royal favor, and there are these favors I could grab. By the way, at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with one random favor. I've already got one random favor with the uh, prime minister. Jen's got a random favor with the master builder. So I could do this to get another prime favor, but instead, I'm going to come here, which activates the clergy track. And there's two arrows here. That means it activates it potentially two spaces. So I did business. That increased the size of my business and it allowed me to do things. I bribed to build a boat and I'm bribing to access the clergy and I can move forward one or two spaces. If I move forward one, I get access to these two tiles. If I move forward one, two, I get access to one of these two tiles. So it's my choice. Do I want this tile, this tile, or this tile? Well, remember, I'm really good at increasing my influence. And every time I increase my influence from now on, I get a point. So I think I want to move this faster. Because remember, once it goes a full 360 degrees around, that's another opportunity to earn influence and increase my influence again. So I'll move one, two. Because this said, I could have moved two. Sometimes you can only move one, but in this case, I can move two. And that gives me access to this, which increases the, the resale value of gold. I can sell gold for two more bucks than anybody else. Or yeah, I can do this, which is an instant one-time thing that gives me two royal favors. You know what? What the heck? Let's do that. I'm just going to take that and instantly take two royal favors. So that means I get a royal favor from the king and from the master builder. Because at any given time, you can only have one of each. So now I've got three royal favors. I've got all three of these guys in my back pocket that I might use on a later turn. Phew! That was it, folks. That was one turn. But you can see, I mean, uh, by playing one card and you know increasing my business, but then bribing a couple guys, doing a bunch of actions, etc., etc., I got a lot done. That was a very, very big turn. And now, at the end of your turn, I am only have four cards left, so I've got to draw one of these cards, which I'll be able to play in a future round. And, you know what, I think I like this one, because this gives me more opportunity to chase the, uh, the clergy wheel, which I want to do because I'm kind of good at earning influence. So I'm going to take this, plus, if I want to, now this would be, if I use this to expand my business, it would, ex it would do the clergy, or instead, I could use this to visit the king. And if I visit the king, hey, I can get to the clergy as well. So I'm going to take this card. This was the only one that would give me the king. If I took this one, this would, if I, if I use this to go to the royal court, I sponsor an event that immediately gives me two tools, which wouldn't be bad because I've got no tools and I've got space for two. But I think I want to visit the king in the future. I'm going to claim this card. So that goes into my hand. And then the last thing I do on my turn is I refill stuff. Um, let's see. Since I took this clergy, I've got to put another clergy tile out. D, D, D. And I've got to clear these off so everybody has access to all the goods on Jen's turn. She can have access to them. And, oh, a new card comes out that Jen will be able to grab. And if I had taken any decree cards, if I had gotten a law that's an in-game bonus card for me, a new one would come out to replace it. Phew. Turn one, done. And now, folks, you know what? Hopefully... That just gives you, I mean, that's, I've just scratched the surface of this game. I haven't even started building anything. But if you'd like to see some more action, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen, and we'll go to the extended playthrough where I'll play Jen's turn. Maybe I'll play another, I'll play a few more turns at least, so you can see some more action. And um, watch as more strategies. Because here's the interesting thing. Now that I've got a boat, 
Jen could use my boat to ship her goods to make money. But if she uses my boat, I score victory points for that. Um, but instead, looking around, because Jen wants to clear out rubble because she gets more points for rubble, I think on her turn, she's going to want to try to maneuver so that she can build a shop and start building shops. Because the more shops you build, the more rubble you clear. The more rubble you clear, the, more, the bigger your, your business gets, which means you can have more cards, etc., etc. So if you want to watch a little bit more, hit that I or follow the show notes. Or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jen and I thought of the game. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.